Hi everyone, Renee here. I hope that you are all staying safe and well. So I've had so many requests to do this video about what happens to your skin when you are wearing a mask. This is something that's not just relevant to us right now, but certainly going into the future. So we're going to talk about how to prevent any skin issues from occurring and how to treat them when they do. So whether you are a healthcare worker wearing an N95 mask, and if you are, you are our heroes. Thank you for everything you do. Or if we're wearing one of these, or a cloth mask, it's an additional occlusive covering that we are putting on over our face for extended and continuous use. It can cause certain skin conditions to arise. So I've asked my friend, Dr. Evan Reeder, to speak to us more about this since I have been bombarding him with questions about this anyway. He's board certified in dermatology and psychiatry and practices out of NYU Hospital. So without further ado, hi, Dr. Reeder, and welcome to my channel. Hey, Renee, and everybody who's watching this video. I'm Evan Reeder. I'm a dermatologist and psychiatrist here in New York City, and I'm here to answer all your mask and skin related mask questions. People are breaking off from masks because of something called acne mechanica. Acne mechanica is really common in athletes who wear padding or chin straps, and they break out in acne really located to the lower part of their face. Two things are really going on. You're getting an occlusion of the hair follicles with buildup of oil and excess dirt, and you're getting overgrowth of acne bacteria. And you're basically creating a really a perfect Petri dish where it's warm, moist environment, and a great place for acne bacteria to grow and thrive. The good news is there's some easy things you can do using over-the-counter medications that are really easy to get at the drugstore. Number one, what I would do is to get something with benzoyl peroxide in it. I usually recommend getting a benzoyl peroxide wash anywhere between 2.5 and 5% strength. The reason why is because really high strength benzoyl peroxides like 10% are no more effective, but they do cause more side effects. Two of the side effects that are very common to see with benzoyl peroxide are drying of the skin and bleaching, bleaching of the towels, bleaching of clothes. So it's really important to wash it off if you're using a, a, um, a benzoyl peroxide wash. The second thing you can do is if you're getting a lot of blackheads and whiteheads, you can use a salicylic acid wash. And I would use that 12 hours after you use the benzoyl peroxide. And I wouldn't use it every day because this is also something that can be very drying for your skin. That combination is pretty potent, but both of these things can dry the skin. So it's really important to use a moisturizing cream twice a day after the application of the salicylic acid or the benzoyl peroxide. So I'm more about the salicylic acid. It works so well for my skin. It's really effective. It really cleans out my pores. But at the same time, I love the analgesic properties it has as well. For cleansers, my two favorites would be the Inky List Salicylic Acid Cleanser and um, Cerave Renewing SA Cleanser. Both of them super gentle pH of 5 to 5.5, at least for me with my New York water, almost zero foaming, even if you're trying really hard to lather, but gentle, non-stripping. These don't dry out your skin. I just wish they'd tell me exactly how much salicylic acid is in this. I mean, psychologically, I just like knowing that this does have 0.5%. Otherwise, you can consider a leave-on treatment like a 2% BHA toner. I love the Paula's Choice one because it is so deeply hydrating. It's like a two-in-one product. You really don't need extra hydration. During the day, if you're just out there running your errands and you're not going to be removing your mask, then you might want to consider wearing pimple patches. I really like the ones from Peace Out because I do feel like they can be undetectable, but also they contain 0.5% salicylic acid in them as well. So you're having something that's treating and protecting your skin while you're wearing the mask. The only time I'll ever use benzoyl peroxide is if I have big clusters, which doesn't really happen anymore since I started using tretinoin. But like what Evan said, I use a 2.5%. Um, I personally really love the Replenix. Um, super quick to dry and also does not stain your towels, your clothes, or anything. So it's something that you apply on as the last step of your skincare routine. In your morning routine, you might want to consider an antibacterial serum. This one from Wish Trend, the Polyphenols in Propolis 15% Ampoule. This is such a perfect formula for times like this because it is a concentrated serum that focuses on being three things, antibacterial, anti anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. It's a real treat for acneic skin. There are also ways in which you can prep your mask as well to reduce breakouts, something that um, Dr. Reeder recommended. So immediately before putting on a mask, assuming it's not a new mask, you want to wipe down the inside of it with isopropyl alcohol, easily obtained at the drugstore or online. 
make sure it has at least 60% alcohol because that is very effective for killing viral particles and bacterial particles. At the end of the day, you want to take that mask and you want to throw it in the wash or you want to hand wash it. If you're not able to hand wash it or if you don't have the time to do that, you can also wipe it down with the 60% alcohol again and use it again the next day. In addition to what Evan said, this is what I do. So I have one of these hairdresser kind of hair misters. These are the best. I have my 70% isopropyl alcohol in here, which I use every single day. I spray everything with this, my deliveries, you name it. 70% is actually more active at killing germs than 99%. So if you have 99% alcohol, what I do is I tend to dilute it a little bit. So in addition to washing cloth masks, I also spray alcohol all over it. The alcohol evaporates really quickly. Sometimes weepy skin underneath the mask, you may be having what we call an eczema or more specifically a contact dermatitis. Contact dermatitis with mask comes in two basic flavors. The most common is an irritant where some sort of component of the mask is irritating the skin. There's also an allergic contact dermatitis, which is less common. Two things you can do at home without actually having to go to see a doctor. You can apply a hydrocortisone cream or ointment that you can get over the counter in your drugstore twice a day, right before you put your mask on and right after you put your mask on. It's also really important to be really gentle with your skin, so cleanse gently, and then after your hydrocortisone has dried, you can put another layer of moisturizing cream on. Moisturizing cream is really helpful for uh, repairing the outer layers of the skin and allowing an eczema to heal. I did a video like years ago about my um, what I use for quick skin recovery. Bioderma's Matrixel ampoules are just my go-to. There's something about that formula that just makes my skin recover so quickly and heal so fast. Unfortunately, that isn't always accessible to me being in the U.S., but a serum that I have come to rely on so much has just kind of risen up and being a go-to for quick and effective relief and rescue is Neod's Modulating Glucosides, a very soothing, calming, anti-inflammatory emulsion. So this targets and treats skin damage, skin sensitivity, vulnerability, irritation, and also inflammation. It's really great at calming down the redness as well. This will soothe and build your skin barrier back up. It's a rich serum, it's really comforting, and it just sorts your skin out. A real soothing mask that you can use during this time is First Aid Beauty's Arnica Relief and Rescue Mask. When it comes to soothing a really intense and inflamed response, nothing does it better than Arnica and Calendula. Um, for anyone who has ever burned their skin, when you put Calendula cream or Arnica cream, it's almost like the burn just dies down. This contains Arnica, Calendula, and a whole bunch of other beautiful soothing ingredients and plant ingredients like Centella Asiatica, licorice root, Alanto and colloidal oatmeal. It's just a great mask. It's creamy, it's rich, apply it on your skin, leave it on for as long as you want, then you could either remove it or you can just sort of um, massage it into your skin. This definitely does form a film. So after it dries and you rub, there will be some pilling. This isn't a greasy mask. It's rich, but it does dry down. I've got some excellent recommendations for spot treating those areas that are particularly raw and shape. These are great for after mask use or for at least a good amount of time before you need to wear a mask. Of course, if you're wearing an N95, and your healthcare worker, then the most important thing is the seal and just not allowing anything to go through. So um, a lot of times that means it should be bare skin. La Roche-Posay's Cicaplast Balm B5 is so good for this exact thing. Spot treating, healing, protecting, treating. When you have skin irritation, then almost everything you apply on your skin causes it to sting or feel sensitive. Um, this soothes that. The other thing that makes this really great is that it actually dries down. So it's not like your typical balm that is sort of thick and greasy and oily. This actually dries down, which makes it perfect to wear underneath the mask or just, you know, in general. This is creamy, but it absorbs really quickly and it just leaves a nice sort of protected seal that is not greasy. Another line that I'm impressed with and I think would really work in this situation, First Aid Beauty's Oat and Hemp Multi-Fix Cell. What I like about the texture is even though it is kind of that waxy, 
rich texture. It's actually not greasy on the skin, so you can use it as a salve um, on areas of your skin that really need the healing and the soothing and the protection. But it actually dries down pretty velvety and matte, which is nice because it doesn't feel uncomfortable when you're wearing a mask over. You don't want to wear, um, have a mask over like any kind of greasiness. If you're looking for something that is petrolatum based, then of course, you know, you can always use Vaseline or Aquaphor. But my personal favorite and recommendation would be Cerave's Healing Ointment. It's got the petrolatum, but also a lot of really skin beneficial and skin healing ingredients as well. It's got the ceramides. It's got the phytosphingosine. There's hyaluronic acid, vitamin B5, you know, vitamin E. Just use it on the really raw and chafed areas of your skin. So these are my mask tips for you, some recommendations. I really want to thank Dr. Evan Reeder for just helping me so much and giving me so much great advice to make this video. Stay well, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you again, healthcare workers. Um, and until next time, I'm wishing you great health and great skin. Bye.